Hey everybody, welcome along. It's Talking Royals. I'm Neil Shrewastu, and this afternoon we're very fortunate to be joined by Justin and Tara Sano. For those of you guys and gals who are not familiar with Justin, great to see you. Justin is a three-time All-Star in the Erie County. He's also a two-time OUA Player of the Year, and I believe he still has the home run record and the RBI record in the OUA as far as most home runs and RBIs, unless somebody's taken that down in the last little bit since the bios got updated on the Griffin website, but yes. Welcome along, Justin. Great to have you I with us. I have not received a phone call saying that I'm second place now, so. <laughs> well, that's good. Then there's, you know, <laughs> still hold that belt. Still be the king of the, king of the castle there. That works for everything as far as that stuff goes. So what have you been doing the last two years? I know we, you, last time I saw you on the field, I guess, was the home run derby, and I guess the, the exhibition game after that. But I know you took last year off for probably personal reasons and everything else, and I don't blame you for doing so because, heck, it was not exactly the best mindset to be trying to get baseball going last year so for starters i've been missing the game yeah we're all missing the game the last two summers have been a bit uh empty yeah there's been a void missing and i think uh, anybody listening to this knows what that void is for me. no question um i chose not to play last year um for a couple of reasons but the biggest one was that the royals weren't going to play i wasn't going to and uh, i'm either wearing the guelph uniform at this point in my baseball career or i'm not wearing it. makes sense so, to me I, I told Wait. that to a bunch of teams. I told that to Sean. I told that to Dino, and mm -hmm. I stuck by it. It was hard. I'll tell you that it was hard oh, to watch because, okay. um, like I said, I missed the game. I two nope. years off is holy cow. That's a long. You know, you don't realize how long of a time that is until you get back into a cage and get back for the first time in years. <laughs> well, no, exactly. It's just like even, even just for as far as like, even from what I do as far as announcing and everything else, it's just like there's only so many games. I mean, it'll be the show 20, 2021, 20, 22, 22. You can do before you say this is not even fun anymore, guys. Like you got to go back to real baseball because it's like always so predictive as, as far as this stuff goes. But you know, league announcing a forty-two game season as well as uh, you haven't been in a, in a cage for three years. How much has that changed your approach this off season? Um, it's changed my approach in terms of getting the body just a little, right, just a little bit sooner than I would have uh, normally liked. Yeah. Uh, I've been in the cage for about. I would say two weeks now, mm -hmm. just between myself and uh, what we've been doing with our Guelph Griffin boys, because nice. I'm still a coach there. Yep. Um, basically, when restrictions were lifted at the end of January is when I started to get cold. That's good. One, we needed two for the Griffin boys so that they could get their stuff ready, and two, for me to get going, because it's been two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> no, no question, no question. Um, so what are you, what have you been doing? Do you have any goals set for this year as far as this? Well, like, Hey, Hey, make sure I can actually get through the 42 game season. Uh, what have you been doing? Anything else off season wise, anything new you've added to the mix to just get that body back in there. So I've changed up my routine just a little bit in terms of, as you said, getting the body more ready. I've focused mm -hmm. more on a, uh, getting the legs underneath me, uh, cardio kind of centric, uh, workout regime. I've kind of stepped away a little bit from the, lifting sort of aspect and just making sure that, you know, my body is as good as ready as it can be for 42 games. Um, yeah. 42 games is a lot. No, <laughs> you no, know, no, we were no. here the last time they tried a 42 season. It's, yep. it's, it's a, a grind and a half for people in this league who are, you know, working men, eight to four, nine to five kind of people. Yep. Um, so I've been just as best as I can because the, there's being in shape and there's being in game shape. And yeah. you don't know you're in game shape until after that first game is underneath your belt and everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going to have aches in places you didn't realize you had aches in places. <laughs> or places for aches. Yes. <laughs> no question. So you were mentioning that when we were just off the top, you mentioned you were doing some yoga now. What brought that on? Just just trying to get something new to keep the body going? or? So yoga is something that I've been doing for a few years now. Nice. Um, I was always hesitant to do it. Didn't think there was anything of it. Um, then I reached an age where everything hurt, even when I wasn't doing <laughs> yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. So we thought, you know what, let's uh, let's try to correct that. A lot of it also was just a buildup of injuries um, yeah. and trying to find some sort of way to trick the body into getting it ready just a little bit sooner. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy it, believe me. Oh, nice, Yoga nice. is something I do twice a week now. I've been doing That's that awesome. for a handful of years, and I think it's made a tremendous difference just in my stamina perspective. and. Um, I would highly recommend it. Uh, whoever listens to this probably thinks I'm a little crazy by doing it. No, 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 no. Actually, probably realizes that doing something like that is actually very beneficial. Oh, no question. So I, I don't shy away from it. I, I'm a one to two week guy, and I enjoy every minute of it. Awesome. I know it's beneficial. 
anything that keeps me on the field just a little bit longer is yeah. something I'm going to now, is there anything left on the Justin and Tara Sano bucket list other than the championship? Is there anything else? Do you have a personal goal? Do you have a number in mind you want to get to as far as a plateau, X number of hits, RBIs, home runs, um, anything? I'll be honest with you, when it comes to personal stuff, I really don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> I just kind of focus on one column, and that's the W. Yeah. Um, I am a team guy all the way. If, if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, you're X amount of weight for this or that, I go, okay, great. Um, I won't tell you. I, I won't tell you. I yeah, promise. Yeah, I won't tell you. That, that's completely fine. I yeah. Somewhere, somebody out there with an IBL stat book is going to look at something and go, oh, he's this close to yeah. this and whatever. And I'll be like, you know that better than I do. To be honest. I got into a point now where, you know, as a young kid, you just want to kind of establish yourself and put up numbers so, so that people know your name. Yeah. Um, I like to think I've done that in a sense. Um, so now the goal is strictly lifting a trophy at the end of the year and nothing like uh, I think that's, I think that's the mindset around this ball club this year. Is like there's a lot of guys that are coming back and everything else. Plus the guys we've added, the three Dominican Republic pitchers we've gotten into the Guerrero, Arias. It's just I don't know the, the attitude just seems to have changed a little bit. Now what does that mean for the, as a player? From you hearing this stuff coming up as a player's standpoint, what does that mean to you when you guys are getting closer to signing those deals, signing signing on the dotted line with the with the Royals for the year? Does that put you in a different mindset with, hey, we're, going, we're not going to longer be the middle of the pack. We're, we're aiming for top two, top three? So let's just say I was excited to begin with to get back on the field. Yeah. When you see the names of the guys that we're going after and that we've signed, it lights that fire just a little bit more. Uh, the league doesn't know uh, Alvarez, the newest guy that we've signed. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen him either. I've only heard word of mouth what he's like, but all signs like you. This guy's going to come in uh, guns a blazing if he put himself on the map pretty damn quick. Yeah. Um, and I think the entire league knows who guys like Guerrero and Arias are. Yeah. No, guys no that question. when they take the ball, they're going to have a long night at the plate. No question. And for me as a just position player, knowing a guy when he takes the ball is going to attack a strike zone, uh, the ball is going to be put in play and keep you on your feet. You enjoy that a lot more. Yeah. than just a guy who takes the ball and you realize, okay, are we going to get two strikes or three balls? <laughs> yeah, no um, question, yeah. And that's not a knock on anything. No, no, it's not. It's just, just some noticed guys. I noticed that, you know, with the league going to more of an import-based pitching staff across the entire yeah. league, um, it's been something where you better be ready to hit. <laughs> yeah, no, no question. You step in the box, you're going to be in a bat. I think that's only good. Yep. Because you don't, I, I don't like being a hitter that kind of has to be like, you know, is this going to be the one, or am I going to see, you know, three or four yeah. that are kind of like whatever, and then I get out of my zone sort of, and it's like, when you step in that box, you better be ready. And I think that's a, a kick in the right direction for where the league goes in terms yeah, of no, no question. better quality viewership for uh, the fans. No question. So I guess the next question is, how, how how's your Spanish? Uh, no comprende. <laughs> no comprende. <laughs> I'm on the same boat. I never thought at age 46 I'd be having to take up, pick up a Rosetta Stone to learn Spanish. Well, ever since these imports came into the league, we've, I've always said to myself, I got to learn some of the Spanish. When yeah. Get here, just to at least, you know, you don't seem like a complete, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of and then they get here and you learn some stuff. And then as soon as they go back, you forget it. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's like that. You know, you, you learn stuff, but there's not stuff we can say on this interview. Right? No, 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 exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of words that are just like, oh, OK, that's what they were saying. Yeah, yeah OK, no, no, no. We can't say that on the air either. Google Translate, you go, oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like I was, I was curious if the league's gonna let us take a, a phone out there with Google Translate. We're having these <laughs> mal mal missions out there because we're not speaking the same language. But I like to think baseball is an international language. You throw a strike, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> throw a strike. Get I, get guy out, please. In a game of baseball, strike ball out safe or all the same. Well, exactly. No question. No question. Um. So yeah, we talked about everything else as far as the goals. What do you see? How long, how long do you think you see yourself playing? Or is it, or is it kind of like a year-to-year -year thing now? Um, at this point, it is a year-to-year -year thing. Yeah. Um, with taking two years off, this is going to be a, a real telling tale as to how my body will hold up. Because yep. um, it's, it's so used to an X amount of games. Now we're adding six more. Yep. And, you know, as being a working man, it, it's hard to even make all six 36 games this season. Yep. Play, you know, 42, all of a sudden you got to... You gotta start yeah, juggling yeah, schedules and, that, and, then, uh, and you know, yeah. I, I can't speak for everybody else, but work comes first. To me. <laughs> oh, no question. Like, <laughs> like, we're not so, getting paid uh, in this league to play baseball. That's for sure. So yeah, it's just like it's I, like I, yeah. I still play this game because I absolutely yeah. love it. I, I wouldn't be signing on a dotted line and putting on a uniform if I didn't. 
still enjoy the game to the level that I do it at. No question. No um, question. So to go back in terms of uh, how much longer I see, um, this is going to be a really telling. If the body feels, mm. you know, semi good to good, then we, you know, consider stuff. If it feels to a point where I just can't contribute to at the level I want it to be, and mm. feel like it's just holding back, then yeah. I have to really think about what's next for me. Yeah. Um, I've always said to myself, there's only two reasons I would ever stop playing golf. One, if I lose the interest, and that's never going to happen. Yeah. And two, if the body just tells me it's time. So the, the latter is going to really be the dictator, especially this year. Yeah. Well, I just I was thinking about when you came through the league, who were your role models then? Who, who, who really took, the, took you under your, your, their wing as far as things to say, hey, this is how it's done on this, at this level? Well, being 20 years old and deciding to skip my final year of junior and put on a Royals uniform, um, and then you step in the locker room and you see a guy named Sean Riley, Frankie yep. Hare, uh, Jeremy Ware, and a coach named Dave DeBolkerhurst, um, yep. you get a real sense that this baseball is just completely different than what you are used to. Yep. And full credit to all those guys that uh, have, you know, one, seen me as a young kid and thought this kid got something. Mm -hmm. not, you know, too overwhelmed by what this baseball provides. Yeah. And two, just being like good friends with them. You yeah. know, just making making buddy buddy with them, not just at the ballpark for those three and a half, four hours. Oh, exactly. Like outside on off days and you know, training stuff and all that. Yeah. And for a guy like Dave the both of us, who I consider after family to me, like I've yeah. known him since I was fifteen years old. Yep. Yeah. And I still consider him like a figure in my life, both baseball and life. That's just I, I, I'm so glad I met him. Yep. Yeah. You know, so um to have him as my first manager, yeah. You know, Yep. Um, there was a bit of a comfort and ease that came to this league that I don't think a lot of other guys had at my age at that time. No question, because no. No, definitely not. No question, when you walk into an ideal locker room, it's intimidating. Yep. Because you're seeing guys who have done something at this caliber of level, even before they got here, yep. that that make you go, wow, like, you guys are all great. Yep. Like, this is what you guys, like, this is the talent you guys have. And I thought I had talent. It's mm -hmm. not even close when I walk into a locker room. So I'm grateful for that opportunity to just know these guys both professionally and personally. How that's going, and I like to transfer it over to the young guys who walk through the locker room. And it's amazing mm -hmm. how you always see in sports how you're the young guy walking in and you see all these dudes and you go, "Wow, holy cow, I want to be like you guys." Yeah. Not one of them. Yeah, so, well, exactly. Yeah. You know, you you want to just pass that on and make the game grow, and especially in a league like this where like this, this league is just from a camaraderie standpoint. Mm -hmm. I'm finding. Oh and yeah. Especially with clubs. Yeah. Well, and, fine. and even for those two years I was in Kitchener, that was a fantastic one. And mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to that because I knew a yeah. couple of those guys even before, but to be teammates with those guys, oh, exactly. that was an awesome group of guys. Well, I remember, I remember just when I, when I was wearing a different hat and everything else, and it came to her trade time and everything else, it was just like, who could we bring from Kitchener if we had to do something as far as the pieces and everything else? And it was like, it was just like they, was, they didn't want to break up that locker room mentality as far as that stuff goes. And, you know, that's full credit to them as far as that stuff. So they, they, kept, on it or they kept their cards really close as far as that stuff. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. things just didn't work out that way as far as whatever. And then, you know, the, we took the, the Royals took the, the lead of the absence. And I guess you went up to Kitchener. Riley went to Kitchener. You guys had some really good, good runs there as far as against Barry and everything else. And I think you guys, you got close. But again, you got shut down by Guerrero. And was it Rias there too at the same time? Or uh, Arius, I think, was there for the one. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if he was there for the, but when you run into a guy like Guerrero and Claudio Gisaldo, or yeah. Uh, Claudio, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really big uphill battle. <laughs> yeah. And that Barry team was just, like, full disclosure, was the most professional and well-liked, just awesome group of talented ball players yeah. I have ever seen ever in this league. Well, oh, it's just, like, it, it just seemed like those the... guys knew each other from a very young age, and yeah. you could tell that baseball was just fun and like the best thing that they've ever done to you. Oh, exactly. And it's just, it was just awesome to see because I, I stripped the berry despite how much the bus rides <laughs> The bus rides are terrible. That, to play that team, <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. like oh, just exactly. to see the talent and like, yeah, they smack you in the ass if you, because yep. they could do that. Yep. Like, absolutely. But they didn't do it in a way where it's like, I don't like, they did it, no. in, they did it in the baseball way. Oh, exactly. Like respect so. that. Exactly. So the players to the coaching staff and just the way they run. Yeah. It's just amazing. And it shows when you win six, seven in a row. Yeah, well, you know? exactly. You know, it, it just seemed like you, you talked to those guys and it was like a five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, they're just in that little whatever mode or whatever else. And then 7.30 would hit that first pitch and that switch should be flipped like that. Oh, yeah. It's it just oh, like, yeah. it's game time. 
and they and they and even and that team was even two different teams when it came to regular season and playoffs. No question, that was the next like, thing I, I was never going saw to. a team go through 32 games in a regular season and still be dominant, and then be more dominant. Oh, exactly. It was, just, it was just it was it was crazy watching that team. It's like okay, that like like okay, they're they're kind of just lulling in the grass. They're not worried about the record make time. But yep. as soon as that pr- they playoffs, could be second place and be like, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. It's another home day. In the final and get ready again. Yeah, exactly. That's what they did. Exactly. No, exactly. It was just like that, and we we went through that with when when Branford was on that run too here in Guelph with Riley and everybody else. It was just like okay, yeah, we just couldn't get to that next level. Couldn't get above them. We came close a couple times. Had them on the ropes, took them to Game Six, Game Seven. Just couldn't put them away. Now, what do you say to a team like when when we get in there? I don't know what kind of mix we're gonna have. We're, I don't think we're gonna be one of the young, well, probably one of the younger ones. I think we're probably gonna be middle of the pack as far as average age goes. We're gonna have some veterans like yourself. I'm not sure if Riley's coming back yet. We haven't heard officially, so haven't been told anything yet. We'll see. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this, Sean, hey, the door is always open. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all agree that we would like him. Yeah, well, no question. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, it, I've been in the mix a little bit. Uh, I've been told everything, and it's and that's just whatever it is. Yep. Um, but I know for a fact, you know, and Sean are putting together a ball club that's not just, hey, we're back. Yep. It's a ball club that's being put together where, hey, we're back. Exactly. And it's no. going to be something that the fans should really get excited about. Exactly. And I think after a two-year hiatus, um, to come at it, I'm not too much into making statements in the month of May and even early June. Yeah. But this year just feels like if we send a message early, yep. then the league will be put on notice. And from my perspective, mm-hmm. I kind of want the league to find out who we are right away. Oh, no, quite. I think it, I think we do too. I think Dino's always had that kind of mentality where it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, it's May and everything else. Guys are going to get some more reps in here, but we're out there to win. We're out there to win. We're yep. able to put the best product on the field and, you know, distance ourselves, get, take some notes and, you know, Learn from the experience as much as possible. And I think that's what we're looking forward to the most is everything else. Really want to just thank you for taking the time out of your Sunday afternoon to hang out with us. I know you had some plans and everything else. Give my best to your parents. Give Vince a big hug, high five and a hug for him. So I hope everything else is good. You keep care. We're looking forward to seeing you in May as soon as possible. We'll probably see you before then anyways. But thank you again for taking the time. Uh, thanks for having me, Neil. This was fun. No problem. Like I said, uh, I'm excited to be back. Um, I know the Royals fans are excited that the Royals are back. And if there's one last message I can leave uh, the fans, uh, especially in Guelph or anybody who's watching, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be new, but it's going to be a season that I think you will really enjoy having the Guelph Royals back in the IBL. Because it also doesn't feel like the IBL. No. Unless Guelph did. No, exactly. I think that's. So. You, I think you hit that hammer on the head right there. It's just as far as yeah. I worked with other teams, and when we were off and everything else, it was just like, yeah, it's not, it's not a home game. It's not a home game to me or anything else like this. I just, not, I just do not have that same attachment as I do when I'm at home. The Royals. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much again, Justin. No problem, Neil. Always a pleasure. Hope to do more in the future down the road during the season. Sounds good. Take care. See you Take later. care, Neil. Thank you again. Bye.